So I'm already starting to get drunk. <laughs> Guess that's why people like Long Island iced teas. The Long Island iced tea has a lot of ingredients, especially when you're making three versions of them. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. Over here is going to be the bottom shelf version. These are all the cheapest of the cheap for all the ingredients. Right here in the middle is value. You spend a little bit more, but you should get good results. Most people would probably say in cocktails, this is as good as you need to get. But then over here, I'm going top shelf with all the ingredients. In the Long Island iced tea, it's all clear liquors. So there's no real expensive versions on the top shelf. Not like you get it with some aged liquors. But this should answer a few questions. First off, is it worth making a Long Island iced tea at home? It's a lot of bottles to bust out to make a drink. Is it good enough to even bother with? And then does spending more on your ingredients, since there's so many different ingredients, does that help? Or since they're all mixed together, it doesn't, you're not even going to taste the difference. So I'm going to find that out. I'm going to taste them blind so I don't have any preconceived notions about what's better. The Long Island iced tea is eight different ingredients of equal parts and then some Coke on top. The Coke is a four to six parts. So it depends on what size of a drink you're making. You could scale it up or down to whatever you want. The normal size of the parts is half ounce each. You got light rum, vodka, gin, tequila, triple sec, lemon juice, lime juice, and rich sugar syrup. The good thing is it's they're all equal parts. So what should we start off with? I'm gonna start off with the sugar syrup. It's rich, two parts sugar, one part water. And just to know, I'm gonna be using these smaller 10 ounce Collins glasses because I'm doing a lot of other drinking today as well and I don't wanna get it completely trashed. So my parts are gonna be one third ounce, one part sugar syrup. I like to start with the sugar syrup because then your liquors could wash it out of the jigger. I think as I use these bottles, I'm gonna move them out of the way. Let's start with the vodka because those are the biggest bottles. For bottom shelf vodka, I've got Gordon's. Just picked up a handle of it because it's so cheap. And then for value vodka, I'm using Sky. And top shelf vodka is still the elite. I'm gonna try my hardest not to spill with this torpedo of a bottle. I always end up spilling it. This is good stuff. By good, I mean it doesn't taste like ethanol. It almost tastes like water. It's got a slightly viscous texture to it, and it, you barely feel it going down. One of these days, I'm going to blind test vodka, see if I really know the difference. And then after vodka, I'm going to go to gin. Bottom shelf gin, Gilby's. I think the handle of this cost me $14. Value gin. I'm going to use beef eater. I did have a slightly bad experience with beef eater a few videos ago. I haven't really tried it again. Give it a second try. These gins are all London dry gins. Top shelf is the number three London dry gin. This is a nice gin with some good citrus flavors in it. Then we're gonna go with white rum or silver rum, whatever you're gonna call it. This is Trader Vic's silver rum. This is dirt cheap also, which is kind of odd because usually branded liquors are more expensive just because of the brand. I don't know why Trader Vic's is so bottom shelf and cheap. I know it smells horrible. It smells, it smells just like rubbing alcohol. And value rum is Bacardi. Just by smelling it, it, it has a slight rum smell to it. It's not just rubbing alcohol. So Bacardi's is pretty cheap too. 
not nearly uh, as cheap. Should be a good value. And then uh, top shelf. I don't know if you'd consider it top shelf, but Plantation three stars. This is a really good white rum. It's aged a few years. This is always good in rum drinks. All right, then we got tequila. Bottom shelf tequila is Jose Cuervo. I think it gets worse than Jose Cuervo, but I don't know if I want to drink anything worse than Jose Cuervo. This is already not 100% agave. It's probably got some neutral grain spirits mixed in it with it. If it was 100% agave, they would say it made with 100% agave instead of just made with blue agave. They know what they're doing with their marketing. Made with who knows how much. And the value of tequila is Espolon. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Espolon? This one is 100% pure agave. Smells pretty good. And just the other day, I tried a sample of this. They were selling it at the store. It's El Sativo. It's locally owned here in Nevada. It's organic and it's 100% agave. I think I only paid 37 bucks for it. They said the price is gonna go up in the 50s. Either way, it tasted good, so I bought it. It's not the most expensive tequila I got. Blanco tequila doesn't really get that expensive anyway because there's not much aging to it. All you could really do is be organic or this is a single estate. Yeah, it smells really good. I used to not like the smell of tequila, and that's because I was smelling Jose Cuervo tequila. You're mostly smelling ethanol and background notes of agave. When you get a good quality tequila, there's a big difference. And last up for the alcohol is triple sec. So for cheap triple sec, Mr. Stacks, this is the lowest proof. This is 30 proof. 15%. These other ones are slightly higher. It basically smells like orange. It's like orange and sugar. And value, I got Naranja orange liqueur. This is supposedly the original orange liqueur from Margaritas. I don't know how they came up with that. And then top shelf, you got Cointreau. And last is one part lemon juice and one part lime juice. You could go with two parts of either if you really wanted to, but I think one part of each makes it better. Okay, and then before I shake these up, I'm gonna have my wife come randomize these. That way, when I pour them, I'm not gonna know which is which, just in case there's a slight difference in how they look or how much liquids in each. All right, I'm just gonna get some ice and shake these up. Gonna strain these into glasses. So they still don't look like Long Island iced teas. You gotta top it off with some Coke. Somewhere between four and six parts. So two to three ounces. Or in my case, the smaller it's gonna be a little less. And these are completed. I'm gonna try this one over here first. They all look the same. Mm. My first impressions is it's kind of dull. You got a hint of tequila. I don't know, there's not much going on there. The acid is a, is a good amount. It's not too sour, but there is a little bit of sour there. 
both of these so far were really refreshing. I'd say there's less tequila flavor here. Just barely could taste juniper on the gin. Give this one a shot. Oh, this one's a lot different. It's like first impression difference is you could tell there's alcohol in this one. I don't know yet if it's, if that's good or bad. So when I think Long Island iced tea, I think the person that wants to drink one is, is that like an Applebee's or something and they want to get trashed, but they don't really want to taste alcohol or they don't want other people to know that they just want to get drunk. But if that's what you're looking for, these are, these are good for that. I think I get rum flavor over here. This one here in the middle tastes the cleanest, the maybe crispest, almost the least flavor. I'm gonna say this one here is, I'm hesitating to say it, but it tastes the dirtiest. <laughs> None of these are offensive. They're all actually, they're good. Just the differences are so minor. I think I'm, my favorite is this first one over here because it has a nice hint of tequila and juniper. I don't know if I get any rum at all there though. And what does the vodka do in this drink? I don't really know. Raises the ABV without adding flavor. As for the orange liqueurs, maybe you get a slight bitterness, orange bitterness. This one here is perplexing me. It's definitely got the most flavor, but it's almost, it's almost a bad flavor. I think this is the cheap. It very well could be the top shelf though, just having more flavors, but it, it, tastes almost like the bad part of bottom shelf liquors. Now this one's my favorite. This one's the second favorite. And this one is the worst, I would say. This one here in the middle is, is the blandest of them all. You could almost pass this off of not even having alcohol in it. Just neutral flavors, nothing overwhelming. This one's pretty neutral also. I just could slightly taste some rum and tequila. I could be backwards on this. These are so similar. If, if my favorite one's the cheapest one, straight up, that's what you want to use. It's so much cheaper. This is what, 99 cents? But well, I don't know. The, the cheap one is 99 cents. I'm already starting to get drunk. <laughs> yes, that's why people like Long Island iced teas. All right, I got to look at what they are before I say anything else. So my favorite one is value. Okay, my second favorite one is cheap. So that means the one I thought tasted the dirtiest and I like the least is the expensive one. What does that mean? I think what it means is the expensive top shelf liquors have the most flavor. They just don't go well together in a Long Island iced tea. The bottom shelf Long Island iced tea, just because they're bottom shelf, it's not gonna come through as shitty liquors. Cause that, it tastes like watered down Coke almost with a little lemon and lime. It's refreshing. And the value, I guess they have a little more flavor. The gin from the beef eater and the, the rum from the Bacardi. They have enough gin and rum flavors that you could, you could taste that it's in there, but it's still, Nice 
and crisp. If you want to taste some flavors from your liquors, this value version is the best. If you want to drink your long hail and iced tea just to get hammered and not taste like you're drinking alcohol, then go just go ahead and get those cheap handles of liquor and pour them in there. Pretty good. Well, it's pretty refreshing. I don't know about good. And I would stay clear for using your top shelf. They just don't mix well together. It's definitely more complex of a flavor than these two, but it's, I don't think it's worth it. As for, is it worth making a Long Island iced tea at home? It is a pain in the ass to bust out that many bottles. I would say no, but you could always pre-batch it by getting a bottle and just pre-mixing your parts. And then all you have to do is add some lemon, lime, and Coke. If you did that, I think it would be worth it. All right, now that I'm half drunk, I'm gonna record next week's video. Don't miss that one. I'm gonna be blind taste testing seven different vanilla vodkas. So if you like this, don't forget to subscribe. And when that video comes out, you'll see that one. See you next week.